We are back here on the Chug Van Show. That was the new one, Heart Reformer from Dead Cross, one of my favorite bands. Their brand new record, too, is out October 28th on Epic Hack Recordings. That band consists of Dave Lombardo, Mike Patton, Justin Pearson, and very special tonight, I am being joined by that fourth member, Michael Crane, guitarist from Dead Cross. Mike, welcome back. Two-time guest here on the Chug Van Show. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much. You know, last we talked was in 2017 in Austin, Texas. And what can I say, man? The world has changed a lot since 2017. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? And, you know, since the debut record and that tour where I got to speak with you and Justin, you know, there's been, you know, health seems to be a theme with, you know, coming into this new record. You know, Mike has his mental health issues that he's dealing with, and you've had your health issues. Can you give us an update yes. on how you're doing right now? I, I, I'm doing great. Um, I'm in remission. Uh, Cancer-free. I mean, I, I, typically, at, you know, at my age, like, I, I've always, I've tried to maintain some semblance of, of healthy lifestyle. Um, I exercise, I eat good, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I definitely used to not. <laughs> I mean, uh, you may even go as far as to say that I had a death wish for quite a long time. I so yeah, when when, when I when I was diagnosed with cancer, I honestly wasn't. I was surprised, but I wasn't too surprised. If that makes any sense, I had an extremely yeah. risky lifestyle. And, and one thing that I read today, congratulations to you on celebrating 16 years sober today. That's right. Thank you. Big congratulations. That. You know, the new album too, uh, like I said, is out later this month. How did you and the brand, how did you and the band approach this record going into it? We had some of the material already written. We had been working on some material, uh, 2018, um, after the European tour and we had, so we had, a, 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 we had like a good 25, 30% material written together. And then, um, as a guitarist and I, I write all typically all the riffs and parts and, and I had a lot of, uh, pieces saved, you know, I had a lot of parts in my phone and, and riffs and, and whatever. I had a lot of material on my phone as well. But then, obviously, I got sick and everything went on hold. And so as soon as I got better, as soon as I was getting better, or when I realized I was going to live, you know, or when the, the will to live took over, I contacted all the guys and contacted Ipecac. I was like, all right, let's book some studio time. Let's fucking do this. You know, and they're like, whoa, 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 are you sure, dude? You know, I was like, yes, I need this. I need this to live. This is what, you know, this is what I live for. Let's do it. So I had just finished treatments. I was still really fucking fucked up and thrashed and sick. And um, we started working. And... Um, Whatever material we didn't have, or we we wrote in the studio with Ross and Ross. Ross was basically like the fifth member of the band. Yeah. Ro Ross Robinson. He really helped arrange all those parts, arrange those songs. Yeah. He's a great fucking producer. That's all I can say. Yeah. So whatever we didn't already have going into the studio, we completed in the studio. So that was the approach on the first record we literally wrote everything on the spot like quickly <laughs> so we had a little more time with this record and some of those parts you know i don't know i think um in my i mean i like this record better it's more developed it's got more emotions in it that's for damn sure and you know i read i read a uh a quote from Justin Pearson that said that motherfucker was going through chemo and we were tracking it. It was brutal to see. 
and I'm sure far more brutal for him to live through. Do you think the rest of the guys in the band, when y'all got in the studio, it was it was sort of a, a motivational tool for them going into recording? I I would have to say yes for sure. I I mean, if I was standing there for eight hours a day, eight plus hours a day, like. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, like what most people don't understand is recording isn't fun. It's not like playing live. Like it's laborious. It's work. Very you're Very you're curious. fucking going over parts. You're playing parts over and over and over. And then scrapping them sometimes. Like, you know what? No, fuck it. You know what I mean? So you don't always get the, 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 what, you're, what you're striving for, what you're working for. Um... So, yeah, I would have to say yes to answer your question. It definitely inspired everyone, I, I, I believe. And, um, yeah, and, and that's, and I think, uh, I think the inspiration was captured well. And I'm proud of that record. And you, you, you said that the kind of the recording process and everything was kind of sped up because you said, let's get in the studio and let's fucking do it. Was it, uh, how was it different this time around than the than the first record? Because, you know, the first record, you know, you'd had all the songs done and then Mike came in and did vocals. But, yes. you know, now that he's, you know, been with the band, how was it a little more different than the first time around? Some of the, well, some of the material we had already worked on, Mike heard and, and kind of demoed on his own. So, so some of that material was set. Mike, we knew what parts Mike really liked and which parts he didn't want changed. And the rest of it, you know, after, you know, having been a band now, we kind of knew where he was at, where he was going with things and what he liked and, you know, where to do a bridge or a chorus, where to make the chorus longer. And and like he had input when we were mixing and after tracking. So we might double apart, make it longer for him or do a key change. But, but mostly, he really likes how Dead Cross operates in the way that we do everything and then send it to him. Oh, okay. So you, you record a bunch of stuff, send it to him? Yeah. Then he tracks over it on his own. He does his own vocals. And I, one of the songs that I really love is the latest single that y'all have released, Christian Missile Crisis. And... That song has a very distinct message. Can you give listeners a little insight into the meaning and uh, message for that song? So I don't know the lyrics to that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they are. I, okay, so the title is a title I came up with for a band I was going to do with Justin back in like 1998. And we never, it never came to fruition. I was way too fucked up. So... That the the title Christian Missile Crisis was just a play on the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it's just a whole for God and country theme. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know lyrically what what it is now. <laughs> I don't. Well, you know what? The listeners can make it out for themselves. Here's the brand new single off the album too, out October 28th via Epic Hack Recordings. Dead Cross, Christian Missile Crisis. All right. We're back being joined by Michael Crane from Dead Cross, guitarist. You just heard their brand new single, Christian Missile Crisis, the new album, Epic Act Recordings. It is releasing October 28th. And listen to the album. I noticed there's prominently more leading vocals from Justin this time around. Was that uh, done on purpose? You know, I think that was all per Mike's request. Mike really wanted to harness that gang vocal approach, you know, like that that um, call and response stuff. And and Justin's got such a good scream, oh, you know. He's he's got like one of the best screams, man, ever. So yeah, that was all like Mike's Mike's vision. And and I guess he just wanted to utilize parts he had heard, obviously, you know, with the first album and then touring with you guys. And he just wanted to implement Justin a little bit more into the vocals. Absolutely. And one thing I uh, read recently that I thought was very cool, you, the band, Dead Cross, is auctioning off two guitars for some really good causes. Can you tell us about those causes? 
I don't know what they are. <laughs> I know it was. I know one of them was the Satanic Temple reproductive rights. Okay. I'm not sure what the second one was, but knowing that that's what it's for, what can you say about you know the Satanic Temple's reproductive rights? You know, cause that they have gone. Okay, on? so so I personally don't know much about the Satanic Temple at all. Mm-hmm. That, that that's definitely Justin's. Um, area area that's just yeah it's justin's area but reproductive rights i mean that i'm 110 percent on board with especially with everything going on in the country right now. yes <laughs> and, and especially you know where i'm where my show is based out of here in texas yeah we're, yeah. we're oh we're, yeah we're, man. we're getting it pretty bad down here yeah i know what do you want people to take away from the album too when they listen to it for the first time freedom honesty and freedom that's uh, that's all i want I want just people just to to listen to the record and just even for a minute just let go everything to forget about all of it, just man. Forget about all the world's problems. For me, that's why I make music. I make music to keep from killing myself. I make music because I have to. And the world is hard enough. Like, give me a place where I can fucking be free. You know, that's that's what it is for me. That's what I would like people to take away from it. But just just follow the music. That's all. Obviously, your health is getting better, and you know Mike's working on his, and he's actually doing some shows at the end of the year. Are there any plans to tour behind this record? Not that I know of. We gotta wait for uh, Mike, you know, to sort himself out, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we'll approach that. But as of now, we're just kind of laying back. Yeah. Before we wrap up, you know, kind of getting towards the end of the interview here, I love the solo stuff you did uh, not that long ago. And do you have any plans for any more solo material? You know, I, I don't. I have a lot of material. I just, I just kind of do that stuff on a whim. If I have free time, and you know what I mean? If I can be in my studio, I'll just, I'll just start tracking stuff, you know? But um, no, like, definitive plans. I'm not opposed to it. I, I mean, I, lo- I love making music, and... You know, that is a kind of music I really enjoy making and, and p- playing and listening to. That makes sense. Another thing I read uh, a few days ago, I was really bummed to hear this, that the band, the other project you were in, Cunts, is breaking up. Yeah, we called it quits. It was Matt and I, the singer, um, were the songwriters. Uh, just he, he had an injury that isn't healing and he can't sing. And so, yeah, we were just like, dude, it's not the same. Fuck it, you know. We got, we got, we got one killer record out. That's a good. Let's end it there. Is it? Is it an injury that he it can heal up over time? Hopefully, but they're 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 not for sure. That's the problem. He might not. But for all the listeners out there, make sure you go pick up Dead Cross's brand new record too on October 28th and you know what where do you think the best place is for people to go pick up this new album that's a good question <laughs> dude I, don't I, even I always know. say support uh, your local record, record shops man uh, hopefully a local record store that would be my my choice yeah. if people can do that like go to a local record store buy it buy the physical copy and, and if they don't to have it, tell them to, to order. other music nerds when you go there. Talk to people. Have some human interaction. Get this record. Get it now. Don't sleep on it. There's a lot of cool, a lot of cool colors. He sent me a handful of them. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, man. I saw I saw some of the pre-orders that were up on the website. They they they, they look very very cool. Yeah. So if you're gonna be lazy for the listeners, if you're gonna be lazy. Go to Epic Hack Recordings online, hit up their web store. You can pre-order it, and I'm sure you can order it once the record does come out. Yes, please do. Get it. Well, Michael, it has been an honor and a pleasure to have you again on the Chug Van Show. Thank you for being here, and I hope to see you sometime down the line when, you know, maybe you guys get out on the road and tour behind this record. That would be great, Chuck. I hope so, too, man. I'd love to see you out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. All right. Thanks for having me, brother.